Hello everyone, my name is Braden Girard and today we're gonna to look at how you can update your own user in Strapi. So this will allow you to update yourself, but you won't be allowed to update any other user. So in order to do this, we need to override the user permissions plugin. So in the extensions folder here, I have a brand new project and in this folder, we're gonna create a new folder called users-permissions so that we know we're overriding the user permissions extension. And then inside of that folder, we're gonna make a new file and that file is gonna be called strappy-server.js. And that will allow us to add to this extension. So we can add custom controllers and we can add custom routes, two things that we'll need to do here to create this new update me route. So first let's create the controller. So we'll do modules.export or module.exports and that will be equal to plugin being passed in as a property. And then inside of here, we can call plugins, say plugin dot controllers dot user dot, and then we're gonna call the controller update me. And that will be an async method with a context as a property going into it. And inside of there, we will write our code. So we're gonna say if the ctx.state.user does not exist or the ctx.state.user.id does not exist, then we're gonna say return ctx.response.status equal to 401. So we're gonna check first to make sure that the user is actually logged in when they're hitting this route. If they're not, we're gonna say they're unauthorized. Then we're gonna say await strappy.query and we're going to query the plugin users-permissions.user and we're gonna use the dot .update method on that. And inside of there, we're going to say where the ID is equal to ctx.state.user.id. So we're making sure we're updating the user that is currently authenticated. And then we're gonna say data that we're gonna be updating is the ctx.request.body. And then once that completes, we're gonna say dot then, and we'll take the response and we don't really need to do anything with the response, but we can just say ctx.response.status is equal to 200. So they get a 200 back if their user was updated successfully. Let me zoom this out a little bit so you can sort of see the whole method here. You can see we are updating using the update me controller that we're creating, checking that if the current user is logged in, then we're using the user permissions plugin update method uh, finding the user by the currently logged in user's ID and using the body to update the data for that user and then returning a 200. Now that's the controller that we're overriding. And we also have to create the route so that the route is available to access that controller. So in order to do that, we're gonna go outside of this plugin.controller. We're gonna say plugin.routes. And then we're gonna say the content dash API. directory inside of routes and then dot routes dot push will pass in the route object. So we have a method for the route, which is going to be put in this case, since we're updating the user, the path is going to be forward slash user forward slash me. Notice that I'm using uh, the singular user. If you use plural users, it will conflict with existing forward slash users routes and it'll think that me is the ID of a user you wanna update and it's gonna hit the default update route um, because this route gets added after that one. So if you just change this path to be user, you're updating a single user um, forward slash me, it won't conflict with existing routes on this plugin. Uh, and then we can say handler and the handler is user.update me. That's the name of the controller that we want this route to hit. And then we give it a config. And the config is has a prefix of an empty string. 
and the policies, which is also empty. So we'll just give it an empty array. You can save that. Now our route is complete here um, and we return the plugin. So we've modified this plugin. Uh, we've added the controller and the routes. So we need to return the plugin here. And then we will run our project here. And that should be all that we need to do for the code. So now that we have our Strapi instance up and running here, we'll go over to Strapi. Um, and if I refresh, okay, uh, you need to go into your settings and you need to go to your roles, go to your authenticated users. And let me just zoom this out a little so we can see it a bit better. Go to user permissions and under user, you need to enable the update me route for authenticated users. We're gonna save that. And then let's go over here in our content manager and let's just create a user. So we'll call the user Braden Gerard, give them an email of Braden at gerard.com, password P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, one, two, three, uh, and confirm true. Okay, so that user is created. Um, let's just go over here and actually add another property to that user just so we can have a property to update um, that might actually be something you would update in the future. So we'll say name, uh, short text, sure. So we'll add name to that user object. Go back over here and we'll edit our user and we'll give them a name, we'll say Braden. It's a little zoomed in here so you can't really see that, but there's the name and we'll save that. There we go, now my user has a name. So if we go over to our Postman, we can log the user in with an identifier here of the username and the body and the password, password123. Um, and yeah, that should be all we need for the API auth local route to log our user in that we just created. So we will send that request and what did we get in the response body? There we go, we got our response. So there's our JSON web token. So we're gonna copy that. And then if we go over here, just to test this out to make sure it's working, we can do the API users me, the default route to get your user information. Um, in set our authorization header to bearer token and set this token to that JWT that we just got. And if we run this, our user information back in the body here. Let's see what we got. Yep, there's our user info, perfect. So we know that our authorization header is working. So we'll go over here and we'll use the localhost 1337 API user me, that new route that we created. Um, and we'll try and update the name. So I had put my first name, Braden. Let's try and update it to the last name of Gerard. And if we send that request, we can see that we get a unauthorized message, missing or invalid credentials. Okay, so let's go over to our authorization header here. Make sure that I've updated it to the new authorization header. And so that's good. We know that our, um, our, our authorization is working correctly in our code. So we know that it was hitting this here, returning the 401. And if we now that I've updated this header information here, send this request again, uh, we'll see an okay response in our body. So if we go back over to Strapi, we open up that user, zoom that out a bit. You can see that the last name is Gerard. So that update worked. So that's all that you have to do to create a update me route or to update the user that is currently logged in and not be able to update other users.